This is my first attempt at making the impossible possible. An accessible box holder that looks good, allows for mixed items, and has no buffer for the full box detection. I like to throw a disclaimer right away. This is a concept only. I would recommend you use the Miss Mini Bulk if you like the storage slice, as it's the exact same thing, but too wide tellable, with better hopper locking and a much smaller footprint. So please, don't build this in survival. So let me quickly define what's a box holder and why we use them. Alright, so a chest can hold 3456 items, but a shulker box can hold 1728 items and fit into a chest. Take that times 54 slots and that's 93,312 items. That's way more than a chest alone. But if we want to use shulker boxes, we gotta make a machine that can place the box, detects when it's full, break it and place a new one. That's what we call a box holder. Now the most popular box holder are simple designs that are small and cheap to build. They are typically used for item collection at a farm. But there is another type of box holder market let's just say and it's the use for main storages. When you build a storage system, you want to access as many items as possible in a compact hall, with very easy access to items. The box holders that are used for farms are not fit for that purpose. They hide the shulky boxes out of reach and oftentimes buffer a bunch of items which you can't access at all. Box holders used for a main storage, on the other hand, are accessible, which means you can open the box while they're filling up but they always buffer a bunch of items, which is less than ideal. You kinda want to access all your items, right? There are a few approaches we can take to give the player access to all items. Some designs will use a hopper line to input items into a box. With these designs, the two hoppers here are going to overflow until an item reaches this dropper and triggers the full box detection. You can technically access everything because the hoppers drain themselves, but you gotta wait for that. And you'll also end up with a hall with visible hoppers. Sure, it leaves more space to access the box, but visible hoppers are kind of an ick for me. What's one of your icks when it comes to guys? When his fingernails are so f***ing long. For me, it's when they have visible hoppers in their storage. Yeah, ugh. Another solution to accessing all items is to have the buffered items accessible. In this old box holder I made, which you probably shouldn't build as it's very scuffed, I have the full box detection located at this height. That lets us really access the buffered items in these droppers. But both methods buffer items. Is there a way to not do that? Well, it turns out there is. We can use this type of full box detection. It works by powering the two droppers in the same game tick in the right order. If there is room inside the shulker box, the item goes into the box. But if the box is full, our item will end up in the second dropper, where it will be read by the comparator that will QC power a piston down here. This box detection system is pretty cool, because not only does it let us make bufferless full box detection, but it also lets us use mixed items thanks to that. And because we can use mixed items, that means that we can use this full box detection with a multi-item sorter. It's really amazing, and it's simple, isn't it? Yeah, maybe if I had a lot of space over here. But I don't. I can't make a lot of room down there. So I have to modify the system. And that's where it starts to get scuffed. Minecraft is coded like shit, alright? And so you got stuff that is locational and stuff that is directional. Locational stuff is essentially like a coin flip. It might work or might not work depending on where you build your thing. But directional is way more forgiving. You just have to build your thing facing the right way. If you don't, your contraption won't work like you want. In my case, I first designed the box holder in this orientation before touching the card input and realizing that I needed to rotate the slice 180 degrees. Cause um, cards are directional too. Look at this goofy sh**. Mojang, you guys kinda suck at coding, not gonna lie. And this is a critique coming from a guy that knows nothing about coding. So in this direction, I had the first dropper for the full box detection getting powered normally, followed by the second dropper being updated by this observer, updating it on the other side. It worked fine, if you ignore the... But when rotating the box holder, the same setup wouldn't work. The observer here would update the second dropper before the first one. 
but in that direction we can use a node block to update the second dropper of the full box detection. Yay, we've done it! And so that's it, right? The artist part is done. Not really. Everything about this slice is cancer to wire. When we do get our full box detection, we can now send the signal to the box collection, which is on the other side of the dropper tower. So we gotta transmit the signal all the way around the dropper tower and over the item input, which uses minecarts, to activate the box breaking sequence. Okay, okay, you probably didn't hear much of what I said. But I just wanted to better convey how much wiring is required just to trigger the box breaking sequence. It's ridiculous. I hate it. Now we can move on to the card input. That was way harder than I thought it would be. The cards start their journey in the Keisha Chan's card miss system that sets up cards like this. It places a stack of items to be sorted in the first and second slot and places junk items in the other slots. We then send the cards like that to our one white elbow card miss designed by Inspector Talon. Now listen carefully, punk rocks. This is a multi-item sorting system explanation just for you. The card has room to pull items that fit the first and second slot only because all the other slots of the cart are filled with junk items that are nowhere to be found in our filter chests, also called whitelisters. If an item is both contained inside of the whitelister chest and inside the mine cart, the cart will pull that item. The comparator that reads the whitelister chest detects that the chest fill level changed and that will drop the signal strength. That signal strength drop unpowers these pistons which will remove the rail that the cart is running on. That rail is on top of soul sand, which is a blessed block. It is a solid block that lets you place stuff on it, but it doesn't have a full block collision. It's slightly shorter, which lets the card sink a little bit into it and make it snap to the rail under the soul sand. Minecraft logic. But keep this one in, Mojang. We like this mechanic. Don't you dare patching that. Now the card will take the bubble column elevator, go over the whitelister chest, and one item of the first slot is going to be sucked out of the card and put back into the whitelister. And that item is basically the exact same item that we just pulled from the whitelister a second ago. Once the card has passed the whitelister, it's time to get rid of the junk items inside of it. We don't want this to go inside of our storage. For that, I use the few hoppers that take out the junk and send it to a water stream to be recycled back to Acacia Chan's input. They are heavily inspired by the original two white elbow slices in Acacia Chan's multi-item sorter. When the cart is left with only the items that are going to the slice, it will be stacked on this one white table cart stack separator that I found on Ribka's channel. The first cart will go directly to the AB tileable cart heater. The cart heater will separate the items and the cart so we don't end up with mine carts inside of the store slice. If you want to learn more about cart heaters, I recommend you check out this video by Firegun. The link should be in the description. Once the items land in here, They'll be sucked by the hoppers and make their way to the dropper tower, where a comparator will read their first dropper and send them down to the shulky box. When the first dropper has been drained completely, a new card will be called to be yeeted into the input. Note that two cards are going to be yeeted at the same time. It's better like that as it decreases downtime when a new card needs to be called, but I won't lie, that was 100% accidental. And with that, we summed up the most impactful things with this particular box loader. But I didn't address the size of this thing. It's massive. Like my- no, no it's not. The storage is massive, yet I'm publishing it anyway. Does that mean I have no regards for the build footprint? No, of course not. It just means that I would rather make the sacrifice there, rather than to make my storage slice unaccessible, noisy, or ugly from the user interface perspective. Before you search for the downloads, I really recommend you watch my unedited explanation video for this box loader on the second channel before you do. Take note that most of the external wiring is missing and that there is one small reliability problem with it right now, so don't use it in survival. And please, don't forget that this storage is a concept only for now. As always, if you appreciate the contraptions as well as the time that I sink into making these videos, please throw me a like. And if you're looking at resources to get better at redstone, my discord server has you covered with that. Before you go, have you ever seen a 6x accessible box loader? Cause I'm in one, if you haven't seen it, it's right there. Or maybe you prefer that video better? I don't know. <laughs>